Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Marta for, for this kind invitation and Michelle for this general uh, introduction. What I was saying is that uh, my presentation may not be as accessible as, as Lisa uh, and everybody would have wished. So perhaps this could be an additional uh, activity for everybody to do, to use that checklist that uh, Lisa kindly shared uh, and see how my presentation could have been uh, or should have been uh, much better than, than it is. Thank you. Um, Marta, I think we can uh, load the first slide at the moment. I see the editing view. Marta? Wonderful. OK, so um, Lisa's uh, first contribution was um, very insightful, I found, uh, in uh, the, the universe, the universal design and how applicable that is also to, to open education. So my focus here is on using open education resources to open up learning, teaching uh, and uh, scholarship. But I think, first of all, it would be useful to frame what we mean by open education resources. And I think the UNESCO recommendations from 2019 um, could help us with this uh, beautifully, I think, where they define that open education resources are learning, teaching and research materials that are either in the public domain or uh, under copyright, but have been released uh, under an open license to enable the reuse, repurposing, adaptation and redistribution, the wider sharing um, for others. OK, we can move on to the next one. <clears throat> now, open education resources in itself are not what open education is about. It's much, much broader. It's a whole ecosystem or melting pot, if you like, of, of learning, teaching, scholarship and research. And open education are uh, a part of this. As you can see here on the right hand side, um, we also talk about open data, uh, open policies and open government, but also open educational practices, open education um, open pedagogies also, but also communities and networks. On the left hand side, we have here a definition of what actually open education is. So it does include, uh, and that comes from the Cape Town um, Open Education Declaration 2007. What you see here is that the emphasis uh, relies on people. This is all about sharing. It's all about collaboration. Uh, this is all about coming together for the wider um, good. So this reminds me, if we look at some of the text in yellow there, of collaboration, for example, collaborative learning and social constructivism, uh, for example, Lev Vygotsky, or um, that openness and sharing and coming together um, reminds me of the communities of practice concept from uh, Leif and, and Wenger, for example, but other scholars such as Catherine Cronin, for example, also talk about um, the co-creative uh, process and the vital role this plays uh, in open education more generally. So if we add to that other um, perspectives and learning theories, if you like, such as uh, constructionism or learning through making uh, by uh, Seymour Papaya, for example. Um, I yeah. think we build a picture that open education and the underpinning um, pedagogies, if you like, are multiple. So what I've tried to illustrate here is what education is, what open education is and how it is done. So the people are at the heart of it. We can go to the next slide. Now, one thing we need to add here is that the purpose, um, I think, of this all. And this this brings us to the why. And I think it links back to also what Lisa says. This is about enabling and making learning accessible and education accessible um, for all. So open education plays a key role in that. There is a social and a political mission that also reminds me of Paul Frey and Bell Hook's um, work. One second here, my I have a problem with my um, electricity. One second, please. That's what happens in life. <laughs> OK, so uh, yes, the work of uh, critical pedagogies of Paul Frere and uh, Bell Hooks, for example, who talk very much about education as a political act and uh, and a moral practice also so higher um 
open education is very much embedded in that in that social mission for change for creating active and critical citizens um, and um, making change happen basically for the good uh, of, of everybody so what we see here on the screen are uh, also elements of uh, how I personally relate open education to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, for example. Um, and I think one thing that often happens is sustainability is looked at from a very narrow lens, perhaps, uh, of environmental sustainability. But education, as we can see here, uh, on the right hand side um, is actually very much at the heart of this as uh, expressed under sustainable development goal number four, where we talk about uh, education for all, but also number 17 linked to partnerships and working together. Now underpinning um, these sustainable development SDGs are the inner development goals and perhaps we are less familiar with these, but they've provide uh, a useful framework and an enabling factor to achieve sustainable development goals. So these are all the skills, behaviors uh, and practices on, on how to uh, engage with the sustainability goals, be more effective and make uh, change happen. We can move on. An example that I would like to um, illustrate here is a project. I was a study. I was involved at the beginning of the pandemic um, with uh, four insti different institutions where we looked at the different perceptions of quality of learning, specifically uh, focusing on ethnically diverse students. And what we found, what you see on the left hand side in, in white, uh, is uh, the things that uh, were sort of positive outcomes, if you like, that uh, students valued the recordings, the videos that they got, uh, they found, and they used them in a very, very resourceful way. They also uh, valued the flexibility of that uh, learning online uh, that, um, that we had to um, provide at the time. Uh, and students acknowledged that uh, the diversity of peers actually was an enriching uh, experience for them, learning experience for them. And I think the last one uh, does not come as a surprise, uh, where we see that the, um, the learners, the confident learners, and perhaps more the able learners were uh, more inclined to engage in uh, autonomous study. Now, on the right hand side, what you see in these boxes, in the yellow and the red uh, boxes is a uh, challenges that these students have. Now, you're talking here in the context of uh, of librarians, perhaps, and I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if you would like here in the chat maybe to um, add your thoughts, um, ideas and practices, how you engage currently with academic teams and how you support them in their practice. Some of the issues linked to resources that were identified in that study, over 800 uh, students participated in that, undergraduate students, um, there were problems with accessing uh, resources and there was an overly reliance uh, on the resources themselves. So these are the key issues that were identified and the practices relating to that that uh, were quite disappointing, uh, I have to say, was that there was limited interaction uh, among uh, peers among the students themselves, they found group work extremely challenging uh, and they experienced uh, loneliness. I don't think our study uh, was unique in that, but it made me wonder how potentially open education um, could um, help us resolve some of these uh, challenges and create a richer, more stimulating and a more inclusive and equitable uh, learning experience for everybody. Marta? So if we see open education as an enabler, uh, it can help us to become more diverse uh, in our offer, in how we present uh, not just the materials, but also uh, the practice, how learning and teaching is actually experienced, but also engaging opportunities around uh, authentic assessment. We could link that back to the sustainable development goals and the political role, if you like, of education and the societal uh, mission of uh, universities. Universities. It is there um, to become more inclusive, to enable us all to co-create and work together, to experiment also uh, and um, practice that criticality and develop and nurture criticality and uh, creativity because creativity requires openness. 
And I think openness uh, requires also that criticality and creativity. So through that uh, open um, education practices, uh, resources, communities and networks, all these things I mentioned uh, at the beginning, we uh, create an environment where learning and teaching is experienced as a more connected and it creates a, a more flexible uh, learning experience as well. But it makes also um, learning and education more accessible to a wider range uh, of, of people, not just our own students who are registered on our courses, but we engage with others who sit outside um, the institutional walls, if you like, and uh, learn with and from each other in a more boundary uh, crossing experience. What we also need to be alert and aware of is that uh, open education can also be a, a barrier. It can magnify uh, inequalities. Um, Lisa mentioned uh, some of these uh, already, and uh, the pandemic uh, also showed us that uh, digital inequalities are there, for example, and can become a, a barrier for, for engagement and for learning. But also the fact that often uh, open educational resources, open practice or open education is practiced more by the global north, uh, as we say, it can uh, be seen as a neo-colonialism uh, and English being the dominant language as well. So we need to be aware of that and try and engage with the global south as well and work together uh, as partners, as collaborators to, um, to make this really uh, an inclusive experience and valuable uh, for everybody involved. So looking very quickly at um, education and open education as a political act, if you like, I thought to present it using three different uh, lenses. What is in there for me as an individual? This is very um, um, important. Also that open education presents an opportunity for, for self-development, for self-growth, uh, and we do that often outside um, formal education, but it can also be uh, and, and perhaps should be more encouraged to be uh, inside uh, our programs, our curricula, etc. but also as a form of uh, life-wide uh, and life-long um, learning. Uh, open education is also extremely valuable for others. We mentioned the sustainability, uh, sustainable development goals, for example, and uh, the social justice um, agenda. So this is how we can be perhaps uh, altruistic, um, help uh, others um, and uh, local communities, but also um, the wider society. And uh, the us perspective, I think it's what brings everything together is that co-creative uh, aspect and that boundary crossing collaboration that is enabled through being open to all. And that means open to diverse perspectives, to diverse uh, individuals, to diverse uh, groups and their ideas uh, and try and harness that opportunity that diversity brings to, uh, to connect diverse ideas, uh, innovate, problem solve, and enjoy each other's company even. You know, it is also about bringing joy uh, and stimulating that learning in environments where we can uh, be happy, which will foster our well-being. So what I would like to do now is just to illustrate very quickly here some examples of open educational resources that can come in different shapes uh, and, and forms and sizes. You see here they can be uh, open magazines. So these are some outputs. Um, magazines, um, picture books, um, we see artwork, um, special issues, more traditional forms of uh, disseminating uh, knowledge, if you like, but it can also be open software, uh, flashcards or games, a wide range of, of outputs that have been developed in this case here, all of them uh, collaboratively with other educators, but also students uh, and uh, the wider public. And they are all released under um, an open license that enables them uh, to, to travel, to travel, um, to be used and uh, readapted. A current resource that we are putting together, again, uh, it's a cross, um, 
Well, it, it is a collaborative effort again as part of the creativity uh, for learning in higher education community. We are putting together a resource where we're collecting 101, as it says here, creative uh, ideas on using um, artificial intelligence in education. We have seen, especially uh, in the last uh, few weeks, there has been a lot of conversation and debate, a very lively debate about should we use it, should we not use it? Uh, what do we do about assessment? What do we do about teaching? Should we forbid it uh, to use? But I think it's about uh, being inquisitive, having the curiosity to explore and experiment. It's breaking down these walls um, and not looking at um, what we don't like and uh, and just try and avoid it. It's part of life. It's embracing it. It's being uh, inventful and finding opportunities to uh, um, resolve um, and to be creative. Yes. And share these ideas. Uh, if you want to find out more about uh, open education resources, we can go to the next slide. The um, University of, uh, of Leeds in collaboration with uh, the University of York and Sheffield have put together uh, a, a toolkit that can be um, accessed and uh, you will find out loads of useful information there. Thank you very much. <clears throat>